business advisory implementation development service. The Bates program is a major step forward. A game changer for the Black business community. Designed specifically for Black entrepreneurs, by Black entrepreneurs. Bates provides expert help to Black businesses. It addresses the most important barriers to Black success. Entrepreneurs need four things to be successful. Access to capital, to network, mentors and sponsors, access to processes. Une façon de travailler avec les entrepreneurs pour vraiment les amener à optimiser et maximiser leur projet entrepreneurial. We're going to sit with you and we're going to wrap you around the best experts we have. Cash Pro will help Black business owners get access to more payroll resources. Anybody that needs to get more funds to amplify their business, ACBN, we do grant writing sessions. The support, it's tremendous. I have a lot to learn and I feel as though I'm, I'm in good hands. I'm really looking forward to all that we're going to be able to accomplish together. Please check out bbpa.org forward slash Bades. Land Acknowledgement. As we gather together, we acknowledge the sacred land on which we reside. It has been a site of human activity for 15,000 years. This land is the territory of the Huron-Wendat and Petun First Nations, the Seneca, and most recently, the Mississaugas of the Credit River. The territory was the subject of Dish with One Spoon Wampoon Belt Covenant, an agreement between the Iroquois Confederacy and Confederacy of the Ojibwe and allied nations to peaceably share and care for the resources around the Great Lakes. Today, this gathering place is still the home of many Indigenous people from across Turtle Island, and we are grateful to have the opportunity to work in the community on this territory. We are also mindful of broken covenants and the need to strive to make right with all our relations. Last but certainly not least, we acknowledge the people of African descent who were brought here against their own will or in search of a safe place to live their lives and raise their children. Reconnaissance des terres. En nous rassemblant, nous reconnaissons la terre sacrée sur laquelle nous résidons. C'est un site d'activité humaine depuis 15 000 ans. Cette terre est le territoire des Premières Nations Huron, Wandat et Petun, les Séniques et plus récemment les Mississauga de la, Crédit, de la rivière Crédit. Le territoire était sujet de l'alliance de la ceinture Wampun plat avec cuillère, une accord entre la Confédération Iroquois et Confédération des Ojibwe et des Nations alliées à partager et à prendre soin pacifiquement pour les ressources autour des Grands Lacs. Aujourd'hui, ce lieu de rassemblement est toujours le foyer de nombreux peuples autochtones de toute l'île de la Tortue et nous sommes reconnaissants d'avoir la possibilité de travailler dans la communauté sur ce territoire. Nous sommes également conscients des alliances brisées et de la nécessité de nous efforcer de guérir toutes nos relations. Dernier point, mais non le moindre, nous remercions les personnes d'ascendance africaine qui ont été amenées ici contre leur volonté ou à la recherche d'un endroit sûr où vivre leur vie et élever leurs enfants. Hello, everyone, and welcome. Thank you all for joining us today at Bays. We have a wonderful program set for you all today and an amazing speaker and presenter. So we're going to get right into it, and I'm going to tell you about Rose Kathy Handy. Rose Kathy Handy has been the CEO of Her Consulting and Services, Inc. for over 20 years offering extensive expertise in development, empowerment, and career building. She is also the founder of BilingualLink.com and has been responsible for helping over 30,000 people find work, thereby improving their lives through the organization's publications, job fairs, web career site, seminars, and training. Rose has become a well-known and respected community leader, advocate, aspiring politician, as well as a creative and successful entrepreneur. 
She likes to inspire more people to succeed, have their career or businesses of their dreams, live with passion, and get the results they are striving for. Highlights of her life story were showcased on TVO, CTV, More Magazine, The Toronto Star, RDI Radio Canada, and more. In 2001, Rose published her title, her book entitled, and I, this title is amazing, Going from Homeless to CEO, the No Excuse Handbook. I know we can have a lot of excuses sometimes, but she has a No Excuse Handbook that you should check out. And she is an award-winning businesswoman, coach, mentor, and a role model to a great number of women, immigrants, leaders, and entrepreneurs locally and around the world. So that was more about Rose Kathy Handy, and I'm going to hand it over to her in just a second. So if you have any questions, we will have a Q&A at the end of the presentation, so you can drop them in the chat, and I'll come back and address those for you. Okay, so I'm going to hand it over to Rose. Thank you, Rose, for joining us today. Oh, thank you for having me. Thank you for that long <laughs> introduction. <laughs> oh, I'm, hello, everybody. Uh, thank you for being here. Um, I'm, I usually, uh, lately, I've been making a lot of presentation in French, so I'm, I'm glad that I can finally make one uh, in English. I am a bilingual success strategist. That's how I call myself these days. Um, but I love uh, setting up businesses and helping businesses uh, grow or helping businesses start. And so it was when I was uh, asked uh, a week or two ago to make a presentation, yes, of course, anything that I can do uh, uh, to help. I usually like to focus on the, the pre-startup, like I always say, the pre-startup stage of launching and growing a business. Uh, because I think it's usually the stage that people tend to overlook. The stage that people don't know or don't understand that they need to really pay close attention. Because sometimes that's the stage that can make or break a business later on. And so that's what we will go through uh, uh, together. I did prepare a, a presentation that will go over, is there a business in my idea? Um, okay. I have to make sure that my, uh, just give me a second. I have to, I was mentioning earlier that sometimes I have a crazy computer. I have to make sure that uh, it doesn't freeze uh, with Zoom, there's usually a problem where it will freeze. So unfortunately, I'm going to try to keep it uh, because sometimes Zoom will freeze uh, the screen. Okay. Okay, is it okay uh, for you guys if I keep it like that? Uh, yes, if you need to keep it in the deck form, totally fine. Yes, because otherwise uh, uh, Zoom is always freezing uh, um, my computer. That's what I find out lately. Um, and so is there a business, uh, a business in my idea? Um, it's very important to take the time to answer that question because before uh, you jump, a lot of people have this excitement. Oh, I got this brilliant idea. It's going to make a lot of money. And, uh, and then they just jump. And I've seen throughout the over 20 years that I've been doing consulting, I've noticed that a lot of people come to me, uh, sometimes before they even come to me, they have already rented a space. They've already spent money uh, creating business cards, creating a website, creating all kinds of things. And sometimes even already talking to supplier or ordering products, having products already here before they come and then uh, start telling you that, okay, this is my idea and this is how I wanna go uh, uh, about it. And then you tell them how, how they have to structure the idea, how they have to launch it. But by that time, they've already done a lot of things that actually end up being a waste of, a waste of money. So, um, 
why should you ask yourself this question? To, uh, to find the answer to that, we have to go back to what is what it is, the definition. I know that there is a lot of definitions out there about what a business is. And out of all the definition, this is my preferred definition of what a business is. My presentation is French and English, as I mentioned, I'm bilingual, <laughs> I'm bilingual. So if there are people there that speak French and so that they can read in English if they, if they prefer. The, so the, the, the business definition, the definition, sorry, of the business that I prefer is this one, where they call it a legal entity that assembles human material and financial resources to produce goods or services to clients with the aim to generate profit and contribute to creating wealth. As you can see, there are a lot of key words in one single definition of what we call a business. Because when any organization or any institution launch a business program, they want to make sure that it is really about building businesses with the aim of generating profit or creating wealth. There is a lot of, uh, like I say, a lot of people get into a lot of activities that can generate money but not every activity that can generate money can be called a business. So when you're looking at this definition of what a business is, what it tells you first is that when you enter the ecosystem of creating a business, you have to be aware of the responsibilities that you have around it because you're really making a commitment to set up something that uh, uh, fall within certain boundaries, fall within certain structure, fall within certain norms. A legal entity that assembles human material and financial resources to produce goods or services to clients with the aim to generate profit and contribute to creating wealth. There are three key responsibilities that are behind a business, you have a social responsibility when you set up a business, you have a fiscal responsibility, you have a legal responsibility. And those three responsibilities mean there are expectation on you to fulfill those responsibilities. Even though when you're setting up a business primarily is for yourself, but because you will be generating, money will be exchanged into a business. And you know that every time money gets involved, there is a legal responsibility, there are ramification because you will be operate, operating um, within a, an economic system. So there has to be boundaries, there has to be norms, and there has to be a commitment for you to respect them and to follow them and to make sure that you or uh, uh, abide, uh, like, or abide by those rules or those norms and the, uh, the way the economy is supposed to be structured. So it's very important to understand that when you're setting up a business, you there will be those expectations, whether you like it or not. From the minute you register a business, the name, you will see that even the name that you choose, there are responsibility behind because you cannot be operating a business under a name that somebody else is using or, so, or somebody else has the right on it. So you already see that legal and, and even social responsibility in there. You see even little things like you will be producing goods and services to clients. They will be using your product. They will be using your services. So that means that you're responsible for what happened to them uh, if there is any consequence to them using your products within those process or the product itself that they're using. And because they want you to be aware of that, that's why you really have to understand what is at stake here when you're running a business or when you're setting up a business. That doesn't mean that you should be scared <laughs> because sometimes I see people usually start saying that, oh, that means it's very complicated. Uh, no, that doesn't mean that you should be scared. It just means that you should be aware of, of that. And on, in terms of generating profit, that's really the aim 
we're not talking about, you're not in business to lose money. You're not in business to run deficits. You are in business to generate a profit. Why? Because you have to leave. You have to make the business leave. And you also have to make it live for a long time, as we're going to see later. And you also have to contribute to creating wealth. Because when you're setting up a business, the expectation is also to make sure that, first of all, you create a job for yourself. And so that means you're creating wealth for yourself. But maybe you're also going to be creating job for other people. You're creating revenue for other people. So that's how you will be able to contribute in creating wealth. And you have to have all of that in mind before you set up a business, knowing that this is how your idea has to be able to fulfill all these responsibilities. And so you set up your business accordingly. So what does that mean? It means it is a commitment the commitment to make sure that you will be respecting those uh, responsibility, the commitment that you will be fulfilling those responsibility, the commitment also that um, you will be able to really the generating wealth side of it, that is also part of your role here and that you're willing to do it and you're not forced to do it you the one that set out to do that and said, hey, I want to play this role this way. The other reason is also, is also a career choice. You have to remember that when you are in business, you working, you make a choice to not work for somebody else, but you decide to work for yourself. So you be your own boss, but it doesn't change what it is in terms of career. When you just, so those who decide to work for somebody else, what happened? They go there to make sure that they have a job that can generate enough money for them for their life, prepare for retirement, take care of their families and take care of all that. It's the same kind of responsibilities that you have. So if you make that career choice, you have to make sure also that your business is able to generate enough revenue to pay for your life, to prepare for your retirement, take care of your family, take care of everything that is around you, that is your responsibility. So when you're setting out a business, you have to have that in mind as well, that the business have to be able to fulfill that career choice. If you go find a job, as I said, you wouldn't find a job that cannot pay for your living, cannot pay for, help you prepare for retirement, cannot make you not be able to take care of your family. So your business have to also be able to fulfill those personal goals. That's how you choose to leave your career. You need to go to the same result like anybody else. So um, coming now into the idea of, uh, of why you also need to really ask yourself that question. This is one thing that I've, I've created that I usually uh, share with the people uh, uh, that I, I support. The success in business rely on three key principles. And these three principles, they all have to be met in order for it to be called a business. Because remember, the responsibility that you had when I, I mentioned the definition, when I was explaining the definition of what a business is. In order for you to get to the result that you want in running a successful business, you have to make sure that your business is feasible. So your idea is feasible. There is a rentability. I, I think it's my, my French word translated, I, uh, the uh, meaning you make profit. Um, so probably the proper uh, English word should be profitability in your business and the viability of your business. The reason you have to have those three, key three principles in place to call your, to make sure that your business is successful, it comes back into the definition of what a business is. And what I also say that this is a career choice. So you don't set up an enterprise for it to finish tomorrow. 
uh, if it's a career choice, the same way when somebody start a job somewhere, you want to stay there, grow there. Maybe you start at, uh, as an analyst and you become a, a CEO of the company, vice president, and you want it because it will be sustaining your life, your uh, dreams. Uh, it has to produce enough money for your life, your retirement. So throughout your life, support you, support your retirement uh, uh, ambition, uh, whatever dream you have there. And, and so it has to be feasible, profitable, viable, because if it's not feasible, you cannot even start it. You have to make sure that this business here is a business that is doable. And those are usually the, the principle that will make you go do a market study, for instance, uh, you will go and analyze and see if you have enough uh, market there for you to call it a business, for you to even sell your product and, and generate enough money uh, to be able to, uh, to, to run your business successfully and to make your business uh, stand. So with this first uh, principle of uh, feasibility, you have to make sure that your idea is not just an idea that is a, a dream. It's not just uh, uh, one of those beauty thing, beautiful thing that it looks good when you're talking to your friends, but it's really something that can be set up, something that can be launched and something that can be um, uh, sold. And that means you have to find in there, uh, in, within your idea, something that where money can be exchanged. So if you have, let's say, I've had a lot of people that come to me and then saying, okay, well, I came to Canada. And since I came to Canada, I realized that there are a lot of people that have a problem where they don't know where to find services. They don't know where to find this and that. And then so I thought that it can be a great idea to set up a business that give information to people. Well, it's a great idea. They always tell you that to set up a business, you need to find a need and fulfill the need. But there is a key question in there. Will people pay for that need? Will people pay to get the need fulfilled? So you have to make sure that whatever is it within your idea, what is the portion within your idea where people will be willing to pay money for? And that's really where the feasibility part of your, your business idea uh, is usually tested. Yes, you can set up a business where you give people an information, but we also know that there is something called Google <laughs> now that everybody knows, and then they can go and Google that information and have the same information. Uh, there is something called the, the 211 where people can call and then get the information. Yes, people have that need, but would they be willing to pay to get that service from you? only you can answer that question. And so you have to make sure that that key first principle of the feasibility of your idea is in place. And again, feasibility means you're gonna find a, a, a part within your idea where people will be willing to pay for it. Because if nobody's paying for it, you don't even have a business to launch. So, Usually there is one thing to find a good idea that people can pay for it. And then you have to go to the next question to ask yourself, will there be enough people that will pay for it that will make the business profitable? Because there's one thing to have an idea. A lot of people have ideas that uh, sometimes, yeah, they can find one, two, three, four people that will pay for it. And sometimes they even go into the 100 and then they get stuck. Or they go into 12 people and then they get stuck. And then all of a sudden they go a year before they had 12 people. And then the next year they only have six people. And then a year after that, four people. And they've made so much effort and so much effort, but there's just not enough people that are paying for that service. And usually when you get into that, position to be the business is going to die and so the business is not going to be successful so it's very important to also make sure that the business is going to be profitable profitable also means that yes you can, may have enough people that pay for your business for your whatever you're selling uh sorry but if the money that you're generating is always putting you at loss 
and then year after year and within 10 years, you still cannot uh, um, make a profit. And when you're making all those projections, it's still showing that after 10 years, 20 years, you're not gonna have more than that, but the cost of the business maybe is so high in running the business. So it tells you that this business, even though you can run it, but it's not gonna be prof profitable because the cost of running it, the cost of being there and offering this service and offering this product is just too high for you to ever, uh, to ever, ever know what a profit is. So it tells you also that this is a business that's not going to be successful. And it might now be that you find something that people can buy. You find enough people that can buy what you have to sell. Maybe the first year, a lot of people bought it, but it also you have to also make sure that this can be repeated again and again and again, and then maybe increasing so that the profit has to be sustained. The profit, profit has to come year after year after year in order for your business to be called viable. So these three key principle, they're really the three, the, what I did call the three principle for success in any business, any business out there, if these three principles, if one of them is not in place, the business is going to stop and the business is going to fail. So it's very important for you knowing that when you're setting up a business, you have to make sure that your business will be able to have these three principles fulfilled. And these three principles will be in place. And then these three principles, you check them. That's why I did put a check mark there that they will be checked, not just for one day, not just for one year but for the duration of your professional life. Because if you choose running your business as your career choice, uh, like, like I said, if you make running a business as your career choice, you have to make sure the same way when somebody has a job, you want the job to be there with you all the time until you retire and that it has produced enough money to even pay for your retirement. The same way when you're running a business, you want it to be there to be feasible, profitable and viable throughout the whole time you will be active and you will be needing the money to leave your retirement until you die. And so it's very important to make sure that you understand this tricky principle and you're able to match your business idea to this key principle, this three key, key principle. So now uh, I guess the, the question is always, yes, but um, it looks too complicated. And then, like I said, no, it's not complicated, but this is what is behind setting up a business. This is also why you see all these services, all this program that government, institution investing to make sure that whenever you have a business idea, there are services in place that will support you to make sure that once you step, you set up your business, once you launch it, your business will be able to check these three principles. So your business will be feasible, your business will be profitable, and your business will be viable. Then that's when usually there is key uh, strategy, there are key uh, so a, a program or support or um, the key processes that have to be put in place to make sure that you meet all these three criteria. So in order for you to get there, I did define a five, what I call a five pillar for you to make sure that you can determine if there is a business within your idea. The five key things that you need to check before you even get into the startup stage. What I usually say the startup stage is the start where you now you start going into um, doing the you know the market uh, the market study, the business plan, the planning of this and planning of that and planning of, of operation, planning of marketing and seeing uh, the 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 feasibility of your, your idea before you even get there. You need, there is a way where you can sit down and ask yourself the key questions that will allow you to determine if this business, this idea that you have, you can go ahead and then start structuring. And if not, 
where do you need to tweak something in order for you to get to the, uh, to the stage where you have to put energy, time and resources to start planning the opening of your business, planning the launching of your business or planning your business itself. So the five key pillars that I did define is like, one is your intention. You need to be clear with your intention. The second one is you need to understand your idea or your project. The third one is the need because they tell people out there and that's what you hear all the time. Well, you know, business is just find a need, fulfill it, find a need, fulfill it, find a need, find, give a solution to a need. But it's very important to understand the need. And the fourth one is your personal capability as I, I, as I call it. Sometimes there is a reason why you see some of the people that build idea and then at the startup stage and then they sell it. There is a reason for that, that they will build, they will build the idea, structure it and raise the fund startup and then hand it to somebody else because sometimes they understand that they're not the one that will do the other part. And it's very important to be honest about what we have, but also sometimes that's what allows you to know what help you need. The, the fifth uh, pillar is the value of your project. It's funny how people usually ignore, ignore that part, but we're gonna come uh, uh, into that in details. So what, I, what, I mean, what do I mean by your intention? It's really important to understand why you will want to start that business. It's a key thing. Why would you want to start that business? Why that idea, not uh, any other idea? Why do you want to involve yourself in setting up? It's really important uh, to define it because some people start businesses because they got laid off and they got pissed. And then all of a sudden they want to show that, hey, my idea is, is good um, and or I've been working for those people for so long, it's time now to go on my own. And or some people start the business because they just finished, uh, they graduated and then they learned something. Uh, they learned something, they have the skills that they've learned and then they want to put it out there uh, in the market. Um, and some other people start a business because maybe they were walking out somewhere and then somebody mentioned uh, a need that they have, and then they help that person. And then they say to themselves, well, maybe if this person uh, need that, maybe there are many other people out there that may have the same need. Believe me, all those three different uh, um, uh, motivations, they have a huge impact in the type of business that you will set up, even how you will register the business, how you incorporate it, how you can set it up, can you scale it? And what are, do you need licenses, certificate and all permit, all those. And it's very important to understand why you're setting up the business. Why you, that idea is what the one that you need to, so to be clear with your intention, that will help you also when you start defining your plan the planning that you will have, the strategy that you will put in place it will help you a lot. And also the, all the people that you will be interacting with, it will help also for them to understand how they can help you, how they can set up and they can see how it can be easily structured. So it's very important for you to really write down why you want to and to understand it and be clear with your motivation because there are people who have launched, who have launched the business for totally the wrong reason. And then they end up uh, uh, really uh, losing terribly there because sometimes somebody will, um, uh, a lot of people will see they um, uh, had like maybe siblings and then they were in business with their siblings. And then maybe uh, there is a, uh, uh, like a conflict that uh, happened there and then all of a sudden they go and then they launch a parallel thing and not understanding that before this first business was launched, there were a lot of um, uh, criteria, there are a lot of uh, 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 key points that were, um, uh, that were, there are a lot of consideration that were uh, put in place before they start a business. Or sometimes I see a lot of people uh, that have an idea just because they saw somebody else 
doing it. And then they say, hey, I look at that person and I've known this person for years. If that person can do it, so can I. But sometimes you don't really know everything about that person. Because sometimes you might know somebody today, but you don't know if in the meantime, the person has been taking some uh, courses to learn other things and the person have different experiences uh, than you. And it's not because that person did that, that means you will be able to do that too. But it might also be that you might maybe be able to do that too, but maybe the way the person did that is not the way you should be doing it, that you should be doing it differently. So it's very important to understand uh, those motivation uh, so that you will understand if the business inside would be feasible, profitable and viable. The other uh, reason is how far can I commit to it? As I gave you the explanation, the definition of what a business is, is really a very serious commitment. And it's not something that you get into, uh, get into because you're just looking for a quick money uh, here. It's a serious commitment because you have legal obligation, you have social obligation, you have fiscal obligation in there. So it's very important to, to analyze your commitment into making your idea come through and uh, you, to growing, not only starting it, but growing it and making it really become what it should be. So it's very, there are methods to uh, examine all of that, but that what I believe programs at the BBPA or other, wherever you are, uh, that can help you uh, structure all those parts. The second pillar uh, is your idea. It's funny how I've seen it year, uh, year in and year out, how people come, they have a business idea, but they don't know if it is a product or is it a service or is it just an expertise that they want to sell? So sometimes people don't understand the difference or is the other, I'd say that something like maybe you are just repping, representing a brand somewhere. And it's very important you as somebody who's going to launch a business to understand your product, understand the idea. You cannot do a, 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 a serious feasibility study if you don't know what you want to put in the market. And I've seen I, at this point, this also create a lot of issue for people because a lot of people, they have an idea, they pay a consultant, business consultant who craft a business plan for them and then boom, they say they're ready to launch a business. And I've seen that again and again and again and again, the mistake that people make because they themselves, they don't take the time to understand what exactly. And then they just feel that all I have to do pay somebody to de uh, define uh, or craft a business plan for me. And the business plan will tell me what I want to do. No, it's the other way around. You're the one that has to know what you want to do, what you're selling before you go do the, the market study, you go develop all those plans. If you don't understand, if you're selling a product or you're serving, selling a service or an expertise, or you're sell, selling a combination of all of that. Sometimes what it also, it can also do is like, you can be uh, missing out on a lot of money within the, even the, exit, the client that you have. You can have a product, but you can also generate uh, that maybe that product, there is a service that is linked to it that you miss. And the client that come to you could have pay for both, but because you didn't know the difference. So you miss out on all of that. You can have a service, but maybe there's a product that can be attached to it. And you can totally miss out on that because you didn't understand your business idea. You didn't understand your, your project. So it's very important to sit down and understand what is your idea? What is your project? Is it a product? Is it a service? Is it an expertise? Or is it something else? A combination of, of some of it or a combination of all of that? It helps you when now you will get into the startup stage when you know you start setting out all those plans and and you will know exactly what to do, and you don't miss out on some money that you could have made there. You don't miss out on a lot of things uh, in your business. The third pillar is the need. Like I said. Um, a lot of people, they hear that find a need and offer a solution, find a need, offer a solution. 
But what is it that is really the need that you want to fill? Is it real? Is it imaginary? Who has that need? I usually like to, um, to take the, the, the example of the food business. Everybody wants to eat, but what does it mean in setting up a business? That's usually a key example. Every single human being has to eat. But in order for every single, some people, in order to get that food inside the body, there are so many different ways. There are some people who, um, in their needs to eat, they, or they go every single day to a restaurant. They spend money in a the restaurant, they eat, they go home. There are some other people, they order the food, the good food come find them. Some other people, they grow their own food before they can eat it. And some other people, they go to the store, to the market, they buy what they want to eat and come cook it in order to eat it. So if you stand in the single need of, for people to feed themselves, do you see how different, there are so many different possibilities in terms of businesses, just into the idea of the need of people need to feed themselves. So that's why it's very important to get into that, the need to, for you to really be precise. What's the exact need I want to give a solution to? And to have to make sure that's not something that you came up in your, your mind and or in just a foolish conversation like that with people, but that, that need is real. And also who has that need? Because it's very important to know who has that need. I always said that I take the example uh, back in, in 99, my, my, my office used to be on two Carlton. And then the funny thing is at that corner of Young and Carlton, you have, if I remember, you have a coffee time, you have, um, no, not coffee, you have Tim Hortons, you have Starbucks, you have McDonald's, uh, that is of the, all those three. And then you also have a, a hotel with um, a restaurant and on the main floor. All those four places offer coffee. And we know that as a busy professional area, people need a coffee. But what makes somebody prefer to walk up there and get his coffee from McDonald's at $1? What will make another person buy the coffee at Tim Hortons at uh, like $1.99 or $2? What would make somebody else buy the coffee at $3 or $4 at Starbucks? On and on and on. So who exactly has that need is also very important. But you have to take the time to uh, set, to answer those questions and when you're defining the need that you want to fulfill. The, 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 the fourth pillar is your capability. I'm going to try to go fast your capability, you need to understand you. What are your assets? What is your competence in uh, when it's linked to your idea? Do you have a network around you? Uh, this is always important, uh, knowing when you start, are you gonna have, are you gonna be able to do this on your own or are you gonna need other people based on the kind of idea that you want to put into place? Is this something that can be done just by you? or it's something where you're gonna need other people because that's when you usually know when you're gonna get there, you will know if you need money and you cannot determine if you don't know what first you bring to the table. So it's very important to know, uh, there's, it's good to be excited about the idea because sometimes you see somebody else doing something and then you don't know what it costs or what it takes to do it. And, but do you have everything that will make you uh, realize or materialize that idea. And you, you, you always has to start with you. No matter what you will do in business, the biggest resource in your business is always you. So it's always important, whether you go and raise a uh, uh, hundred uh, billion dollars for your business idea, it's still gonna be you, the main resource in your business. So it's very important to understand who you are, what are your limitations? What are your weaknesses? What are your strengths? What do you know? What you don't know? What do you have to, and 
what, what can you do? What do you need other people to come and compliment in you in order for uh, your, your business idea to move forward? It will help you at the stage of planning. When you're planning your operation, you will know who now you have to go look for uh, so that you can add here in order for your uh, idea to, um, to, to be launched. And the fifth pillar is the value of your project. How much could I generate per year? Is there a future uh, in the, with this idea? Can my idea grow? This come back to the original, we come back to where we started from, the definition of what a business is. Because you want to generate wealth, it's very important to make sure that you generate wealth, not just for one day, but throughout your life and throughout the whole time you want to run this business idea. So it's very important to have all this in, in place. So those are the, the, the five pillar that I just present. And then of course, there are services, I, like I said, the BBPA and other services, no matter where you are, there are small business agencies and there are consultant coaches, all kind of people that are out there that can support you in this ideation, because all of this is the ideation part, what they call the pre-startup stage of uh, starting and launching your business. And the pre-startup stage is very key for anybody who wants to set up a serious business, a business that you want to set up and want to see it grow at the, 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 the best of your ability, you really need to take the time before you even start going into setting up business plan and all that to answer this question and have all this in play because this is also what will guide you when you will be doing uh, the market study, will guide you into what kind of market study you need to do, what kind of feasibility study you need to do, what kind of uh, testing you need to do, what kind of planning you need to do. You have to have all these questions answered before you even start. And once you have all of this, then you will see, come back and answer the key question of the three principles. If I set up my idea, Will I have something there to sell? What is it? If I start selling it, would I sell it to enough people to generate profit? And then if I generate profit, would I be able to generate profit, a profit for a long term? And those are the, the, that's how you determine if there is a business within your idea. Um, I can get questions, comments, and that's what I had to, uh, to share. Let me stop sharing and so that I go, I'll come back to you guys and you can ask all the questions. <laughs> Excellent. Thank you so much, Rose, for sharing all of that um, just critical information that you shared with us. It was, it was awesome. If anybody has any questions, you can write them in the chat. And um, if you would like to just come up and ask them yourselves, you're more than welcome to. Uh, like she says, can be questions or comments, anything else that maybe you were just like, yeah, that's exactly right. Maybe that spoke to you personally. I know a lot of it did for me. Um, so Rose, I just have a question just to kick some things off. Oh, okay. Well, let me get started with Celeste. Okay, and a hand went up. Okay, well, I'm gonna step back and get to the question here. All right, so, um, where can I find, this from Celeste, thank you, Celeste. Where can I find information on having a business incorporated, um, but you need a brand inside that business? That means separating the board members for the brand. So where can I find information on having a business incorporated? Well, if you don't go through the, I would say those are kind of uh, tricky structure where you need uh, a professional to support you. I always say we're here with the BBPA, start with the BBPA. They have a lot of business consultants that can help you. They have lawyers that can help you. There is always also, I think, uh, Corporation uh, Canada, the government website is really a beautiful, uh, well-developed website that can give you a lot of information about uh, incorporating a business, setting up a business, having a different structure within a corporation. But I think that uh, the, you always need to start with uh, where the organization that you have. And I tell people, go get the resources because the government 
invest a lot of money with organizations like BBPA, and then they have a lot of professionals that are there ready and willing to help you with a lot of expertise. Call them, use that, call them and, 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 and ask that question. And they're always ready. If they don't have the answer, they will find the person that has the answer for you. Excellent. Thank you so much. Michael, I didn't know if you want to hop on or not, but if you did, just let me know. It's appropriate, I will. Just tell okay. me when you have the time. But certainly I want um, to hop on, not only to say thanks to Roseanne, but to um, just expand on, on why we have sessions like these. Excellent. Thank you. All right. And so let's I mean, unless you oh. want me to go now, I could I could do it. You know, I mean, it's we have got ten more minutes, but there may be questions in the chat that I would, you know, like okay. to answer. Okay, we'll we'll go through some of those, and I'll bring you right back. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. All right, uh, let's see. Is it is it? Um, let's see, Galadua. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for such, thanks for the invitation and such a great presentation. Um, quick question. I am from the Caribbean and Canadian culture is a little different to me. Um, I don't know, uh, to me, the requirements sounds a little different in Canada to what I'm accustomed to. My question to you is, um, my interest is in beekeeping and I, I am, where can I get information? Because I want to tell it to, um, to, 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 to meet um, that, that Canadian culture. I, I, um, something that's new, a new environment is where can I go? Where can you direct me to get that kind of thing to know what exists and how I can tell it to, to, sit, to suit that um, environment and also to, to align it to my area of expertise. Please and thanks. If I understand is bookkeeping? Beekeeping, honey, honey. Oh, okay, beekeeping. Okay, yeah, yeah. sorry. <laughs> beekeeping. Yeah, but as I said, and I'm going to keep repeating it, and uh, that really start with the BBPA. Uh, start with the BBPA because the beauty with this kind of organization is they really have an ecosystem of experts around. And so they will do the intake with you, know which stage, where you are at that stage now, and then they, they know based on your needs, they will refer you, um, uh, they will refer you to uh, the proper consultant, the proper professionals and the proper professional association too. And if you need a permit, if you need a license, if you need a certificate, uh, because some you have some industry that have different uh, regulations. And so they will know where to send you instead of you trying it on your own. And really, that's really the key idea that these are services that are free most of the time with this business organization. Use it. I run a business organization, uh, a business program as well. Uh, it's about Francophone uh, speaking, but it's usually that's the same work we do. Uh, we do there. Somebody comes, you sit down with the person and based on your idea, we have a network of uh, expert professionals and, and, and professional organization that uh, will be probably more knowledgeable. And then they will work with you and connect you to the right people. So start with the BBP where you are today. And uh, the BBP where you are today, no matter whether you, they will know where to refer you. Um, because they will take the time, they will give an hour, two hours to sit down and listen to you in details, go through your paperwork and see which stage you are in and then know where to send you based on, the, because you might think that at this stage, you just want to know how, but it might, it might need more than you think uh, that you, you need. And then they will know how to best refer you. So I will say, start from there. Thank you, Rose. And, and I just brought Michael up because we had the question, how would I meet with Rose to discuss with her my business idea? So I'll let y'all both tackle that question. <laughs> and, and, and you know I'm what? <laughs> Rose, Rose have been doing an excellent job in, in pitching for the program that we're actually in as we sit here. This is the uh, business advisory implementation and development services workshop. We have that program running right now. There are 200 persons, 200 businesses as we speak that we're providing exactly what Rose is explaining. 
you apply to us via our website. There are 48 questions that you answer to put um, your business in a context. We surround you with a network that will assist you in taking that business from an idea to implementation or to sustain the business where it's at or to grow or scale that business. So it's exactly what she's explaining. You wanna get in the beekeeping business, you can apply or you'll send us an email um, you know, to any one of the bbpa.org links, the treasurer, the president, the ED, the office, the marketing person, whichever one is easier for you. And we will get back to you. We'll have a discussion with you. And as Rose clearly indicate, I'm not a beekeeper, I'm an accountant. But I'm certain that in my network, <laughs> we do have people who know about how to, you know, get involved in beekeeping and that sort of stuff. Um, and I just want to piggyback on uh, at least one of the items that uh, Rose mentioned earlier, collecting the information about what is it you want to do. Um, those folks who have been applying to um, our, our program, they are 48 questions and they're designed once you answer them to put us in a good position to provide help to you. But you have to answer all the questions, not some of the questions, all the questions. You have to answer all the questions as factually as you can. Because the information you give us or the information we gather put us in an excellent position to assess together your needs and to be able to recommend resources to support it. So I'm just reaching out to the folks who have applied and just think back if you did not answer all 48 questions you kind of jump some of them um you should actually go back and answer those questions because it will make life really easy for the assessors and for us down the road as we seek to help you in, in you know growing your business um and that lean exactly to what rose mentioned earlier about you know if you have the capacity to do certain things if there's a business in the idea uh, the various pillars, the feasibility, all those kinds of stuff. And so those questions are designed to, to you know, to actually put it in a context. Uh, so that's kind of what I'd like to see. And as per usual, thanks for coming on board and, and, and thanks for listening to, to Rose. Rose is actually one of our program providers, our service providers. For those folks who have business idea and want to expand on it, we would assign roles to work with you. So she's providing her skill set to us today to explain to you the business that she's in and just done a superb job. So for those folks who want you know, to work with her about moving from idea to implementation or just to revisit the idea and see if there's a business in it, you'd have an expert to work with you. Or one of the experts, you actually see one here right now that will be assigned to people. Thanks, thanks, um, Victoria. <laughs> Excellent. Thanks, Michael. The two hands that are raised. If yes, time, yes. I wanted to, yes. Haley, first hand up, Haley. Hi there, Rose. I just wanted to say um, I really appreciate this presentation. And I also wanted to say, um, for those of you guys who don't know, CIBWE is a program that also is offering um, awards uh, for top 100 um, Black Women to Watch. I've been lucky enough to earn it. And I just, I can't even tell you how much it's really, um, I'm like crying, but it's really um, changed my whole career. And I just wanted to say like, I really appreciate it because as a 20 year old, like this is a big deal, you know? Um, but I wanted to ask, is there an opportunity for us to submit applications for people who we would like to nominate um, this year? Um, yeah, yes. Okay, first of all, thank you very much for acknowledging that. It usually warms my heart to always uh, hear, to always hear that, that it made a difference in a Black woman, uh, what Black women's life is something that I take a lot of pride in. Um, the uh, pride in something that I launched in 2015, 
at the Canada International Black Women event. Yes. Um, the reason we had a little bit of delay because we're setting up a big thing and I'm in a process of hiring. I'm looking for a, uh, a project manager and a, uh, uh, an event coordinator, an experienced event coordinator. And I'm looking for um, a project manager as well, <laughs> as well, because we are scaling it up we are scaling it up and then and adding a lot of things there for a, a national program with that, which was always the, the idea from the get-go that after five years, uh, we have 500 women in the network and now we can do something bigger, something bigger. And I've been um, uh, like lucky enough to, <laughs> to, uh, Yes, Fran. <laughs> yes, Fran. And I'm very proud of the work you do at the BBP. I say that all over the place. <laughs> Thank and, you. Thank yeah, you. I just had to let them know that I was featured in, in 2016 as one of Canada's Black women to watch. So yes, uh, it's nice to see you on the uh, um, road. It's really nice to see yeah, you. Yeah, thank you. Always warm my heart. <laughs> all right. Excellent. And thank you for dropping that information about CIBWE. And we have Rose. Another rose with her hand up. <laughs> yes. Hi. Good afternoon, everyone. I actually had a message for um, a question for Michael. When I was filling out my application, I made the error in moving forward, just trying to fill the application out. But when I tried to go back to upload my business plan, I couldn't do it. I did put a note in there letting them know that I do have a business plan, but I wasn't able to upload because I had moved forward in the application. How do I correct that without filling out another application? Because my concern is if I fill out another application, will that restart the process? Will that create an issue? How do I do that? Is there a way for me to send the business plan in? There are a number of ways we can do it, um, Rose, and thanks for the question. But I think the simplest one now is to wait until we reach out to you via the assessors and then um, we can just take the business plan as, a, as an attachment to an email once they're doing, once they start to talk to you about the assessment. So you don't need to go back to the application to upload it. Um, the process is you apply and then someone reach out to you to talk about the nitty gritty of your application. And during that time, you can forward a copy of the business plan to them. All right, thank you. I hope it would work like that, but I wasn't sure that if, if I didn't have the business plan, whether it would be one of those applications that would not be looked at because it was uh, missing the business plan. No, not really, because if you notice the questions we asked, we the, the 48 question, one of them would have been, if you have a business plan and you say yes, but it will not necessarily ask you for a copy. What will happen is that the answer to yes means once an assessor comes to you, they will say, can I see the draft? Okay, all right. Thank you very much. You're most welcome. Thank and you. And sorry, one more quick question. Um, I have a, another business idea, and I did go on grades and try to fill in, but because this is an idea, filling out the questions that was there, so many things wasn't applicable as yet. So I delete, I did not submit it because it didn't make sense to submit it when I couldn't answer a lot of things. How would I then? Do I send a, an email to say, can I have a sit down to talk to someone about the business idea? How do I approach that now? Well, again, there, there are multiple approach. The one you're thinking about is that would work. You can always send a link to uh, Mr. McNaughton McLean, who's our main project manager in that area. I think it's office at BBP. But the, well, the application blank itself still allow you to do that. One okay. of the questions is pre-revenue. And you could take that one and the others, you could you could put the estimates you have in mind and so on and so forth, where you think you want a business to go once it's up and running. But so, so the application blank is designed to also cover uh, ideas and pre-startup. Okay, thank you. You're most welcome. Thank you. And Rose, if you have time for just the last two questions, <laughs> if possible. Okay, perfect. And Mac dropped his email in there. Thank you, Mac. All right, so um, one's really quick, you know, are you familiar with online businesses? Yes. And then the I, last- I run, I run, I can say I'm president of Bilingual Link. <laughs> <laughs> and that was the next question. They want to know yeah. more about Bilingual Link business and just share just more information on that. Oh, okay. Bilingual Link is a business that I launched back in 2000 
back in 2000 and uh, way back then when um, I was the very first person in Canada to, to do a bilingual job fair in Canada. It's really a concept that I created uh, from, from, from scratch. And I launched, uh, I launched bilingual link back then, they were just the career site were just starting. So I launched Bilingual Link uh, back then and it has been running since. Bilingual Link is a career site where employers looking for bilingual people come and then post, uh, they pay to post the job, the job offer and, and um, bilingual candidate, they post the profile and the resume and, and, and uh, employers find candidates they don't need to, it's highly automated for actually for more than 50, uh, uh, 10 years, uh, I had I had a partnership with Workopolis, and where we were using uh, we were using the same technology as Workopolis. We, were pro we had a partnership where they were providing me with the technology. But when in 2018 Workopolis was purchased by uh, Indeed, Indeed, uh, and Indeed didn't want to take that portion where the partnership, so I was able to get back the ownership of Bilingual 100%. Um, and then so now I reown it 100 percent and and running it and I have a different company that's uh, a managed technology. So yes, <laughs> yes, I'm I'm very familiar with uh, online businesses and and it's something that I like to do more in the future. Wonderful. Well, we dropped bilingualink.com in the chat for you if you would like to check <laughs> Rose out over there. Um, but Rose, thank you so much for joining us today. Truly an amazing presentation. I've seen that all through the chat and they just thoroughly enjoyed it. And thank you so much for giving me a round of applause on that one. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. It was my pleasure. Excellent. And then I wish everybody great success. I want to see all your businesses out there. We need it. We need to make the change in our community, creating jobs, uh, the summer is coming. I mean, if all I see what 58 people in the imagine every single one of you uh, had a business running that 58 young people that we can give summer jobs. Uh, if we start even from there and imagine the difference that it can make uh, economically in our community. That's usually my commitment. My personal value is to help break the cycle of poverty in everything that I do. And so um, I want to see all of you. Uh, I want to see all of you with that commitment to go and launch your businesses. We all here to help. And I'm always at, uh, uh, you can ask the BBP, they will give you my information, rose at bilingualink.com, that's my email, <laughs> that's my email. And I'm always available. I live in Mississauga and I live and work in Mississauga. My, my business is in Mississauga, my office is in Mississauga. And uh, so I'm always available. And, and I wish you, all of you, great success. Thank you so much, Rose. And we drop Rose at bilingualink.com. All right, it's her information. Um, and I brought Michael up really quickly because if you love this, come join us at Community Space on Saturday. <laughs> we are there Saturday, 10 a.m. Yes, in a, a marketing to tell series. A tell a friend to tell a friend. <laughs> um, just, we have a lot of great information going on at the BB. PA, we just need you to show up and we'll bring the information to you. And amazing special guests and speakers like we had today, Ms. Rose Handy. So thank you so much for joining us today. And we will see you next week. Um, if I don't see you Saturday, this Saturday, we'll see you again next week, Thursday. Thank you so much for joining us, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks, Rose. Thanks, Bye-bye.